Hi everyone and welcome to the next Grad Cracker webinar with Centrica. So Centrica provides energy services and solutions to residential and business customers in the UK and Ireland. Some of Centrica's most well-known brands are British Gas, who you all have heard of, Hive and Centrica Business Solutions. Today we're joined by Gabriella, Future Talent Manager and four grads, Abby, Sama, Ben and Abhishek. Gabriella, so to start with you, could you tell the audience a little bit more about you and your role? Thank you, Carla. Uh, thank you for inviting us here today and hello to everyone. So as you say, I'm the future talent manager here at Centrica um, and my responsibility is to manage all the graduate and internship programmes across the board. Yeah. So it's very much an end to end role. Um, I would start working with the business at the beginning of the year to understand their needs, both current needs and future needs. Um, all the way through to bringing grads on board into the business and supporting them as they move through the programme and roll off into substantive roles within the business. Fantastic. And, and will you be involved in the whole recruitment process then? So when you're doing inter interviews and everything else, would a student meet you during that side of things? I do get involved. Um, however, we have a resourcing team that will actually sort of facilitate uh, and run uh, a number of the uh, assessment centres and, uh, you know, the assessment process. However, um, assessment centres themselves are actually facilitated by our current grads on programme. And the actual people who do most of the assessing and interviewing are representatives from the business. Um, specifically people who are working the business area or function that the graduate is looking to do, join, but also representatives from all our employee networks as well, just to ensure that we have a real diverse representation. Fantastic. And we'll find out a little bit more about the whole um, assessment centre and recruitment process a little bit later on um, in the webinar. Um, another question I'd like to ask you, Gabriella. So in your opinion, you know, you've been at Centrica for a good number of years now for, and, and obviously met students and graduates throughout the whole process. Now, in your opinion, why should the Grad Cracker audience apply to Centrica? Well, we run some fantastic graduate programmes at Centrica, but apart from that, I would say that I'm a little biased. But <laughs> what I would say is, you know, the energy sector is a really exciting sector to join at the moment. Um, we're going through a huge amount of change. We're absolutely at the forefront of driving the, the green agenda, sustainability, the road to net zero. Um, and because we are the largest UK organisation in that sector, um, we've got over 12 million uh, household customers. So we, we're leading in a number of the, these areas. So for example, we have recently committed that our, our fleet of vans used by our 11,000 sort of field engineers will all be electric within the next two years. And we've actually just placed the UK's largest order for electric vans. Oh, wow. And while we're talking about the technology and your future plans, so um, there's, some, there's some future plans for Hive, you know, the smart, smart technology arm um, of Centrica. So what, what, are there, what are the plans there, you know, what are you looking to do moving forward? So Hive, yes, as you say, it's sort of um, uh, our, our smart homes uh, operations. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we sell a number of products that enable the organise uh, the the householder to be able to manage their energy more f uh, efficiently and sustainably. So we will sell a hub and an app, and then there's a whole load of devices which will allow you to control your, uh, your lights, your heating, the temperatures in various rooms, um, also to control um, you know, uh, plug sockets so you can have your kettle uh, switched on for when you come home, a whole host of devices which are constantly changing. And we're also linking this into the uh, electric vehicles. So one of our real areas of growth um, is the installation of uh, electric vehicle charging points, both sort of for commercial businesses, but also for householders. And that will also integrate into our, our home hub um, and you'll still be able to use your, your smartphone to, again, look to see when's the best time to, to charge your car based upon the tariff you're on, um, you know, and, and how efficiently everything is running. So lots of really exciting things happening in that, in that field. I can't believe how much technology has changed. I've still got a whistling kettle that I actually have to put on the arga to boil. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I'm way behind the times of hive and everything else, but it's, it sounds absolutely fascinating. Um, so I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar about the different um, brands, so for example, British Gas Hive and everything else. So when a student or graduate joins Centrica, um, are they able to go into all of the different businesses and tell us a little bit about why each different why each business differs? Okay, yeah, we're, we're a large organisation, so we have over 22,000 employees. Um, so to put it simplistically, within the organisation, we supply energy uh, to both our sort of households, but also our commercial uh, customers, so our business side of things. But as well as supplying um, uh, energy and uh, sort of the energy management processes systems, we also um, provide services and other products um, to allow people to stay more in control of their energy and their energy management. So, for example, one of our business areas is known as Centrica Business Solutions. Yeah. So this helps businesses really build the energy systems of the future. And it does this through providing energy insights. So the use of big data to uh, help business performance and manage their energy. Um, it helps businesses optimize their energy resources. Um, and also it helps um, energy efficiency through the use of new technology. So that's one part of the business. Then there would be um, British Gas, for example, is the largest part of our business. And this is where we have you know, as I mentioned, 11,000 field engineers who are going out and installing boilers and servicing boilers, but also we're, we're sort of upskilling them to become smart engineers through the rollout of uh, uh, smart uh, meters and also to upskill them to also be able to install electric vehicle charging points. So we're constantly evolving um, and there's huge uh, differences in the business. We, we always say at Centrica, you can work for, for British Gas, which has, uh, you know, it has an insurance arm. Um, we're, we're very much into marketing because we've got a lot of products out there, but you could also work for an organization such as Hive or Local Heroes, which are our smaller um, businesses. And people who work there say, it's almost like working for a small startup um, yeah. with the, you know, the real focus on innovation and agility. Um, mm -hmm. So you, know, you could certainly have carve out a career in Centrica um, and be able to experience a whole load of different business areas um, and cultures and, and office environments as well once we, we all get back to the office. Yeah. Do you know when that will be, Gabrielle, when you're all going to be back in the office or is it still quite open? So we, we take advice, obviously, from the government. So we're following the government guidelines. But there's been a lot of uh, sort of a thinking around, well, just because the government tells us we can go back into the office, is that the right thing to do? So there's a lot of consultation taking place at the moment. And um, we've got sort of a, a, a group uh, of people looking at uh, the ways of working. And in actual fact, we've also got a group of grads who are part of that project, who have been brought in deliberately to be the agitators to the ideas um, so that we make sure that anything we do is sort of really future proof. Um, but from what I hear our, our CEO talk about a lot is moving forward, we're going to be totally flexible. If you want to be in the office, then that's fine. And there's a number of people that really enjoy being in the off, uh, office environment. There's others that prefer to stay at home because of commitments or, you know, long commutes. And that will be fine as well. But we will allow people still to come together when there's a real benefit to it from, you know, whether you, you want to have a big team meeting, you want to do training, that sort of thing. So we are very much adopting a very flexible approach and that will continue moving forward. So I think, I think that's one of the positives of, of what we've all been through over the past year. Yeah. It's good that such a big company such as Centrica, Gabriella, can be can be that flexible and you are considering you know the thoughts and the, the opinions of the graduates because they are your your future your future leaders and um, you did mention your new um ceo chris um, o'shea there and when I mean, i've spoken to yeah. you previously and obviously my contacts um, at centrica you all say about how um the different dynamics that he's brought to the business have been so inspiring now what what has he brought to the business you know what how do you see things changing um now Chris is the CEO. Yeah, really, really interesting. So he joined the business in about November 2018 as our CFO. Yeah. Um, and he was the, he's always been the uh, exec sponsor for early careers and all the graduate programs. He got to take over as CEO. Oh. Can, can, you still, can you still hear me? Can still hear Sorry, you. I've got a blue. <laughs> 
scene of death, unfortunately. Um, I'll, carry on, I'll carry on talking. Um, so uh, he took over as CEO. Yeah. Um, sorry, I just need to look back in. He took over as CEO in April 2020, yeah. so right at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and, and he's really brought a different style to uh, the leadership approach. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a Glaswegian. He's a real straight talker. He's really passionate about doing the right thing. Uh, he's a real uh, advocate for all our employee networks and for diversity. Um, and he's really hands on as well. So, um, for example, he, he really likes to empower our graduates to yes. challenge and change the ways we approach things. So an example of this was recently he was, um, well, probably about two or three months ago, he was at a, um, a board meeting and the senior leaders were um, discussing a business is issue that seemed to be reoccurring. Yeah. So um, a day or so after that, uh, Chris O'Shea sent me a, a, an email saying, I want a group of grads to look at this issue because we just don't seem to be able to get to the bottom of it. So I pulled together a group of graduates. Um, we had an analyst, we had uh, an insights grad, we had a marketing grad, and we had a, um, a sort of a customer operations grad. Um, and they were tasked with looking at this problem that we were facing. And they spent six weeks working together um, and then presented that to our senior leadership team. Um, and we're actually given the go ahead to implement all their recommendations, which is currently happening as we speak. Yeah. Um, and then also last week, um, Chris O'Shea, he does town halls every couple of weeks that, to the whole company. So there are thousands of people that join these calls. And this group of grads were invited by Chris to talk about the project, you know, how they've worked together, how they'd used some agile methodology, the outcome of the project and the fact that this was now being rolled out. Um, and it went, re it went down really well with the business. And as I was saying to those concerned, you know, an endorsement from the CEO yeah. in the first 18 months of your career, quite an achievement. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And to present as well to, you know, all, all the Centrica employees, that must have been quite daunting, but it's such a brilliant experience. Um, and yeah, when we've spoken to, um, as I say, when I've spoken to my, my other contacts at Centrica, um, they've mentioned about Chris being involved in like the, the um, graduate inductions and things like that. So it does seem like he, he is really hands on. Cool. Thanks, Gabriella. So I will, um, yeah. we'll, I'll come back to you a little bit later on, but we're going to now go on and meet the grads. Yeah, thank you so much um, for that introduction. It's really interesting. There's a lot of stuff that Centrica do that I didn't even realise until I started working on this webinar with Carla um, yeah. in the last few weeks. And it's just fantastic to hear. And we're also, when, when we come and meet Ben in, in a little while, um, I know one of the big things for Ben when he was attracted to Centrica was how valued the grads are. And that just, mm -hmm. the, the everything you said about Chris O'Shea there is just kind of proof of that put in. So that's great to hear. And it's a great introduction to, to the business. Um, but Abby, I'm going to come over and start with you and meet you. So you studied um, maths at Durham University. And I know a big pull for you was that you wanted to be able to work in finance um, within industry rather than for a specific finance company. Um, so can you kind of let us know what initially attracted you to apply to Centrica? Hi, yeah, um, I was interested in working in the energy industry as Gabriella mentioned earlier it's a it's an interesting industry to be in and I'd studied it as a case study at my economics A level so um, I'd enjoyed kind of what I'd learned about it so far and thought it'd be an interesting industry to work in mm -hmm. um, and again as, as Gabriella mentioned there's just so much variety at Centrica you've got the energy business the services business the solutions the the high kind of con controlling your home with your phone all of that I just thought it was so diverse there was so much kind of that you could potentially get involved in that it was something that really attracted me to kind of to apply to Centrica um, and then you mentioned there that I was interested in working in finance and industry rather than in practice and that was something that before I applied so I started my journey at Centrica on the summer placement and, and before I applied for the summer placement I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do as my career so I thought of finance having done maths it seemed sensible <laughs> um, and applied for that but didn't really know a huge amount about it so over my 10 weeks on the summer placement I spoke to lots of people within finance and learned about the different routes of how to qualify as an accountant and that you could kind of go down qualifying in industry or you could also do it in practice kind of at an audit firm or the big four type thing and and having met and worked with other, everyone in the Centrica finance team I just found it such a, a great place to work and it was 
interesting working kind of within an industry and kind of helping produce the, the financial results as opposed to to in my eyes kind of as audit kind of checking other people's results it was yeah. so that was something that I didn't know initially when I applied but after my 10 weeks um, in the summer that was something I I decided that that's what I wanted to do. No, that's brilliant. I think that's a really good point, Abby, that I think a lot of people might think, oh, I'm studying maths and yeah, I want to go into the finance industry, but not really understand that you can do that within a company. You can still get the same qualifications and progress and and learn the same variety of things. Um, So just touching upon the summer placement with Centrica, I know obviously you've you've come back to Centrica, so you must have loved it. Um, But can you tell us a little bit more about you, your time during the summer placement, because you were working in the cash and working capital team, which... To be honest, I don't know what that means. If you could explain that, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, so I did my summer placement in 2017, as you said, in the cash and working capital team. And they were the team that that forecast and analysed um, debt, cash flow, working capital, um, and delivered insight and reporting into these areas to key stakeholders. Um, so I assisted with, with a few projects over my 10 weeks and also was responsible for submitting a, a weekly cash flow forecast to the group treasury team for the, for the home services business. Um, so it was a great opportunity to learn about kind of the cash work and capital team, but also the, the great benefit of, of the, the summer placement was that you stay at the Royal, we stayed at the Royal Holloway University with all, all the other interns. So you get to meet all the other interns that were on the finance stream that you might not have met if you were just kind of going into the office every day and not reaching out and meeting other grads. So we all worked together to kind of talk to each other and learn about other areas of finance and what everyone else was involved in because because we were all kind of spread across finance in in very different roles so um we organized kind of networking and 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 kind of I got to meet kind of the group treasurer sat down with someone from financial control and it was just a great opportunity to kind of learn not just about the one team that you were working in but also the kind of the other areas of finance that that you might be interested in in a future career in yeah that's brilliant so you all stayed together did you for and that was all organized by Centrica before you did the placement yeah so when I did the summer placement I'm not sure if, if this is is changed but um we we all lived at the Royal Holloway for the 10 weeks of our of our internship and you were mixed up kind of in halls with with graduates from other streams as well so I think there was a bunch of HR marketing finance we were all mixed in 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 different flats and it was that was also nice to kind of learn about what other people were doing that that weren't working in finance so it was it, it was a, yeah it was a good positive experience yeah that sounds really fun um cool and then when you finished the placement what was the process to kind of coming back as a graduate were you offered a place straight after your placement or did you have to go through and apply again or how did that work so at the end of your 10 weeks you do um a presentation on what you've learned what you how you've added value kind of and then just kind of yeah just on your 10 weeks and then if you're interested in applying for the graduate scheme you kind of register your interest and then have a an interview um at the end of your 10 weeks and then um found out kind of a a month or so later whether or not you were successful in getting onto the grad scheme which I was pleased to hear that I was (laughs) um so yeah that's how that worked that's great so you basically went back to your final year of uni knowing that you had that grad scheme scheme secured yeah which was great it was nice not to have that pressure and just to be able to focus on kind of final year dissertation all of that fun stuff absolutely (laughs) that's something that we say all the time yeah the the, one of the huge benefits is it does give you that freedom to just focus on your final year you've got that job sorted um so yeah that's brilliant um, so yeah, so now you are back on the graduate scheme and you are on the finance graduate scheme. So could you tell us just a little bit more about what you've done so far on that, Abby? Yeah, so I am in my, my third and final year of the grad scheme. I did my, my first year in group treasury, my second year in, in a group business performance management team. And then I'm now working in the British Gas business performance management team as a, a finance partner for the sales and marketing team, um, the British Gas finance, HR and corporate affairs teams as well. So I am in this current role support support those teams producing their budgets and kind of tracking their their actual spend versus what they've planned um and then kind of with other ad hoc requests for kind of analysis on things um and also with any business cases that the that the, te- the teams are producing so that's a, a little bit about my role now fantastic so it sounds like you did a huge amount from your summer placement through to your final year of your grad school yeah it's great there's such variety in the roles um kind of having done two roles in in a group group team I've kind of had that whole view of the bigger picture Centrica but then also in this year it's nice to be working in kind of within a business unit and supporting a specific team within that business unit it's great to have such a range of experience 
Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for that overview, Abby. I know we're going to come back to you and find out more about you know future projects and, and the recruitment process and stuff shortly. But I'm going to scoot across to Ben now um, so we can find out a little bit more about your journey, Ben. So I know a huge selling point about Centrica for you was how the graduates are treated. And I think we've already kind of touched upon that um, early on. Um, because you know graduates seem to be held in really high esteem and given a lot of responsibility from day one so can you tell me a little bit more about you know why this attracted um, you and you know what what thoughts you had before you applied to, to Centra Care? Yeah sure um, so like we said previously the grads are held in such high esteem around the business and we're, we're, we are really thrown in at the deep end mm -hmm. um, we're given a lot of responsibility from very early on um, with some of us leading large teams within the first few weeks of joining Centrica so uh, myself for example I knew that I would be put in a team leader placement where I would be given um, a, a high level of responsibility managing a big team of people um, and that's something that I personally don't think you would get if you weren't on such a great grad scheme at Centrica to be given the opportunity to kind of manage people who have been at the business a lot been with the business a lot longer than you have um, and I think one of the great things as well about being a grad here is that we're really the only people in the business that can experience such a wide range of different roles across the business with sometimes very little or no experience in those different areas um, and that's not uh, uh, something that everyone uh, gets the opportunity to do um so i think they were kind of the two main selling points for me absolutely must have been terrifying i was just thinking <laughs> about in like the first couple of months of being a grad i would have probably frozen yeah it was it was it, it was very difficult very challenging but also so rewarding and everything yeah, i've done yeah. since i can see the skills coming back through yeah. um so yeah it was a good experience wow um, now, you've also mentioned in the kind of run up to the webinar that you, there was um, other things that you could get involved in at Centrica that you help felt really helped make a difference to you. So can you tell us a little bit more about those activities, too? Yeah, sure. So um, I think one of the main selling points of Centrica to me um, now and before joining um, were the the opportunities that grads could getting outside of their, their regular day roles mm -hmm. um, and I think for me our employee networks are in my opinion the best way or one of the best ways for us to do that um, so at Centrica we've got loads of employee networks um, our LGBTQ plus network spectrum our ethnicity network voice the Centrica women's network but also um, much more niche networks like um, the menopause group and the working parents group as well mm -hmm. um, and lots of our grads are really heavily involved in um, the network so some of them are on um, the committees working on things like events and uh, communications and some of us um, like myself I'm the chair of the LGBTQ plus network um, which is a really high level of responsibility and it's good to have that level of responsibility so early on in, in your career um, and I think being involved in things like that really allows you to not only make a difference at the business, but also um, to develop skills that you probably wouldn't develop um, inside your normal regular role. So I created the strategy for Spectrum, for example, which is something completely different to what I'd be doing now. Um, and as well as that, there's like charity challenges um, with our partner Carers UK, for example, um, and you can get involved in things like this or um, facilitating summer placement um assessment centers and grad assessment centers and things like that so there's so much going on wow yeah i mean it sounds like again it's go, just going back to the point that you mentioned earlier about how valued the grads are um in the business that you know you are given that responsibility outside of your day job so that's that's great to hear as well ben um now kind of moving back to your your day-to-day -day role though you are on the business management scheme um and you are a product owner in the new energy platforms business so could you tell us a little bit <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um, so I'll start by discussing uh, my role as a product owner and then I will go into our new energy platforms business. Um, so as a product owner um, in our sales and marketing team, I'm involved in kind of managing the end to end delivery of our sales and acquisitions incentives. Um, and this involves kind of leading a team of developers, scrum masters, um, business analysts, kind of collect requests from business stakeholders and develop those requests into tangible products um, like um, our direct sales journey, for example, our new incentives. Um, and for those of you that aren't familiar with what a product owner is, I'm essentially kind of, they describe it as a mini CEO of your product area. So the ultimate responsibility for products about when they're released or when improvements need to be made um, lies with you. Mm -hmm. 
Um, for me, this role has been particularly exciting um, because it's in our new energy platform business, which is our new startup business, very similar to, to Hive. Um, but this is our digital only flexible energy um, business, which will ultimately become the new face of British Gas and Centrica. Um, and within the new energy platforms, we're kind of working to um, agile methodologies, which is something that's very, very new to Centrica um, and very new to a lot of businesses. Um, so it's been great to not only get experience in a startup area, but also to kind of work and explore some exciting new ways of working as well. Yeah. I think there's a few, uh, that's really, really interesting. There's a few things that you, you said there that kind of surprised me. I mean, um, the fact that you are kind of on the business management scheme, you know, something that might sound quite business focused, but actually you're dealing with a lot of very technical people. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of transferable skills there that you'll be picking up um, across the technology side of things, as well as, the, you know, the business side of things. Um, so, yeah, that sounds really, really interesting. Um, thank you so much for that, Ben. It was great to hear kind of about your experiences so far. And Sama, I am going to come to you now. So you studied chemical engineering and then finance and accounting at university. So those are pretty diverse subject areas. So can you tell us what the thinking was there, you know, why you decided to go from one into the other? Yeah, very true. Sophie. Thank you. So um, I was initially really attracted to engineering because of how mathematical and challenging it seemed, which it really was. And I enjoyed it a lot and really heavily but I didn't really like sort of the work I would be doing post-university as a process engineer and a lot of sort of graduate schemes around the sort of engineering didn't really speak to me um so I wasn't really keen on continuing with it um so I thought why not sort of diversify um and finance and accounting sort of really spoke to me because it's still very numerical but it's a lot more general um so just like Abby said um, so doing it at a master's level made quite a lot of sense to me at the time um, and I did actually end up really enjoying it and I can see myself um, moving into a lot more of the risk-based modules that align sort of the finance and the stats which is sort of where I am now yeah. in the business so even though I am still quite new to sort of a lot of the concepts and a lot of the theory um, it is somewhere that I do sort of want to integrate myself more and um, just like uh, Gab said like the business is so wide that there is always that opportunity to find yourself sort of embedded in, in what you want and where you see yourself. Um, and then, you know, once you've done your finance and accounting master's degree, you obviously have now joined Centricra and you're an analyst within the business. So can you tell us about your current role and your team? Sure. So I'll just quickly take you through all the, the other roles I've had because I'm super fortunate. I've been really lucky to be a part of um, three really different teams still as an analyst in all of them. Um, so my first was in digital analytics and optimization at BG itself. And then my second was wildly different. It was in financial reporting and automation within finance itself. So I got that kind of group view of finance and what it, what it meant in terms of automation. And currently I am in um, the EGI um, L Limited, which is the insurance arm of BG itself. So I'm in the actuarial insurance and risk team. And what my team does is primarily sort of statistical analysis um, in terms of claims frequencies and how better we can service our customers in relation to their insurance contracts. So um, the team does sort of half of that and the other half is a lot of capital modeling, making sure that there's an optimum amount of liquidity, um, just in case of any sort of extreme events that would cause a significant change in how customers would um, raise claims. Um, so, yeah, they're sort of second line of defense, but, yeah, it's they're extremely important in what they do in terms of managing the FCA and the PRA's uh, expectations. Okay. FCA and PRA. <laughs> I was thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> so the Financial Conduct Authority and then the Prudential Regulation Authority. So the PRA is all sort of really involved in how conduct works and regulations and stuff like that. And then the FCA is all about you know, how we can service our customers in sort of that financial aspect. Okay. So it sounds like every, a lot of what you're doing at the moment is very much focused on the kind of finance side, side of things. But mm. have you found that, you know, the, the chemical engineering aspect of your background has been a benefit as well to working in an organisation like Centrica? Yeah, definitely. I think with the finance, it's given me a lot of sort of the understanding of numeracy overall. But with chemical engineering, just 
the various sort of projects we had and a lot of the code I used, um, I did end up using quite a lot of like my second placement. So although I've never actually used probably anything I learned from my degree within Centric, like, there's so much transferable skills. Um, just like the previous grad mentioned, there's just, there's the ability to get stuck in. So as long as you're sort of willing to learn and you're open to really push yourself, you'll succeed either way, I think. Brilliant, thank you, Summer. Um, and I know for you, from a young age, you kind of were always really interested in the energy sector. So can you tell us a little bit more about where, where you think that kind of initially came from and, and what drove you to then work in the sector? Yeah, sure. So it basically just stems on sort of what Gabriella said, where it's just so dynamic, the energy set, uh, industry as a whole. You just, I don't think you get that in quite a lot of the other industries. Um, it's just in sort of a constant state of flux, especially in the last 20 years and moving on to the next 20 years, um, especially as we try to you know, go into more green um, alternatives and the future decentralization of power. Um, I think really just not just as a business, but as sort of humanity as a whole, we've got so much to look forward to and to actually work towards. Um, and especially the business itself, where just like the other uh, two grads mentioned, we're in a turning point in how we're able to actually um, you know, source the energy, um, but also how to service our customers better. So there's just so much agile methodology and so many things that we are currently working on to try and actually bridge that gap um, and then make life just overall more easier, more streamlined. And I think as well, having actually studied chemical engineering, you get to like, quite literally visualize the difficulties um, there are in creating these energy products um, and making them actually chemically effective and cost effective. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a really quite a difficult question to answer. And it's something I wanted to kind of be sort of in the heart of it and what better way than to you know, work for <laughs> one of sort of the, the biggest companies in that sector. Yeah, absolutely. You've definitely gone to the right place, haven't you? <laughs> um, I'm going to just touch upon something here that I think a few people have mentioned you mentioned agile methodologies now that's not something or a term that I'm particularly familiar with do you mind just giving us an, an overview of what that means Summer? So I have never worked in a team that does use agile methodology but from what I understand it's a lot more rather than sort of a waterfall where you have it by sort of monthly it's a lot more weekly so you're able to respond sort of day to day to challenges rather than sort of breaking up your time over the week but I'm sure um, any of the other grads who actually used um, the Agile methodology can, can break in um, and correct me if I'm wrong. I think, Ben, was that going to be, I was going to speak to you about that later on, wasn't I, Ben? Uh, yeah, do you want me to cover it now? Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool, yeah, yeah lead on nicely. Yeah, sure. Um, so Agile Methodologies is, um, Sam is right in the sense that Waterfall is the traditional way of working where you kind of have an issue, you all put everything into it, and then it's done and you move on to a next one. Um, Agile Methodologies is more to do with iterations and working in cycles, and um, you kind of work on a few different things, release them as you go, and then it's all about the way you learn about that. You don't wait until everything's finished. You kind of release bit by bit, see if there's an issue, do some um, research, get some feedback from customers, mm -hmm. make changes again in another iteration, and then just keep going. And it's like a cycle. Um, mm -hmm. There are also different methods of agile methodology. So there is um, Scrum, which is the one I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, and you kind of do regular releases of products and things like that over, say, a two week period. Um, or there is Kanban, um, which I think came from Toyota. Um, and basically, that's when you um, release as and when you've got products um, just to keep the flow going um, and you don't have to wait for your, your cycles to end. Um, but it's, I think it came from the tech industry, um, but it's something that companies are increasingly picking up um, because, it, you know, they're seeing the benefits of being able to release quick, quickly, but also get that feedback constantly. Yeah, that makes more sense in like working on a project for a long period of time than releasing it and then something not being quite right or, you know, getting the feedback con consistently throughout. So, yeah, thank, thanks, Ben. Yeah, no thank problem. You. Um, sorry, Carla, I just jumped in there. I was just thinking like yeah, a... <laughs> I was thinking I think I think Ben Ben is the expert about this. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're gonna come to Abhishek now. Um last but no make by no means least. Um you studied medical pharmacology at Cardiff. So can you tell us um what medical pharmacology is? 
Yeah, brilliant. Thank, thanks for having us on. Um, in its simplest term, medical pharmacology is the study of drugs interactions on the various systems in the human body. Mm -hmm. So I had modules such as cardiovascular pharmacology, neuropharmacology. So I learned like the impact of uh, antipsychotics on the human brain. So mm -hmm. it's a really, really niche degree um, at Cardiff, especially I only had 20 odd people in my course. Mm -hmm. So it actually was my insurance option. So in a previous life, when I was 16, I actually was meant to study medicine. Um, and so I missed my offer of I, I got a B in chemistry. And so I studied pharmacology as kind of like an insurance, because once you did that for three years, you could transfer on to postgraduate medicine. Okay. And obviously, I had various ups and downs in my journey. But when you went to university, and we'll touch on these in the next few questions, I had a career change of mind, um, and it ended up into what I'm doing now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a shift, isn't it, going from <laughs> medical pharmacology to, to working for an organisation like Centrica. So what kind of did make you make you make that decision to shift away? So I guess, if I'm being honest, I, did, I didn't think I was allowed to. So just to give some context, on my first day at university, the lecturer kind of sat us down and said, like, hands up, raise your hand if you want to study medicine or dentistry post the degree. And then half the class put their hand up. And then he was like, hands up if you want to go into scientific research. And then the other half put their hands up. And that was it. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, on the first day of university, you kind of just kind of narrowed my career into these two different pots. So that really annoyed me. Um, and so I kind of wanted to rebel. Um, and so when it came to like applying to summer, <laughs> when it came to summer internship, um, I wanted to apply to things more business related. So my parents run a family business. So I've always been interested in sales, marketing, business from a young age. And so I started off applying to kind of sales and marketing within the pharmaceutical industry, because that's what I thought my degree dictated me to do. But then just for fun, I tried going to different industries like fast moving consumer goods, energy industry, et cetera. Um, and I heard back for, three, for a few of them and thought, oh, OK, I'm, al I'm allowed to do this. Um, and then when it came to the grad scheme, I came across Centrica. And as for all the points Gabrielle said, it looked like a fantastic opportunity. Um, and it was the first question I got asked at my interview, why have you made the change? And I think I gave a relatively de a decent answer and never, <laughs> never, look, never looked back since. So I guess one thing I'd say to like STEM careers, um, students doing STEM degrees, don't let your degree dictate the field you can go into because I'm, I'm an example of you can literally take your degree and go into whatever industry you want to go into um, against whatever people say. Yeah. No, I think that's something that we say all the time as well, Abhishek, that, you know, there's so many transferable skills with a STEM degree. Don't pigeon yourself um, your whole. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pigeon your whole. And, you know, keep your options open. <laughs> I'm going to go bright red in a second. Um, I think so far, well, yeah, just going to terms with what you've just said um, in, front, in front of a live audience. Um, the, so um, Hannah, our colleague, has written a blog about the secret sectors which are out there, which I think, Abhishek, you know, you'd, you'd agree with me on, on saying this. To STEM students, the world is your oyster. So this this um, blog, that article that Hannah's written is all about like STEM shouldn't go into intellectual property or law um, or insurance, retail, for example. So take a look at that. It's on the Career Centre. But yeah, having a STEM degree just opens the, the door to so many different sectors and, and career opportunities to you. Thank you, you. time to compose myself there, Carl. I, know, I thought you might need that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so our is within the commercial team. Um, so again, different to what you studied at university. So you are a product development manager. Could you tell us a little bit more about you know your team and and your role right now? Yeah, definitely. So I've just actually rolled off the commercial marketing grad scheme. So just really, really briefly, I did three roles um, in my two and a half, two two years. So I worked in product development at British Gas, digital sales at Hive, and then more marketing at Centrica Business Solutions. And the best thing about Centric is you can kind of like decide which rotation you enjoyed and almost kind of drive your own career. So I knew I loved product development and sales. And so that's what I'm doing now. And I sit in the protection team in, in the commercial team at British Gas. So that's kind of looking at all our products, which essentially require some sort of protection, i.e. like a warranty. So just to give an example of one of my projects, I'm working with our electric vehicle team. So as Gabriella mentioned, British Gas are now installing electric vehicle charge points um, to various different customers. And my job is to kind of think of new ways to essentially make more money for the business. So let's say you're a customer and British Gas comes in to install your electric vehicle charge point. I would then come up with different ideas of what point in the journey can we sell other products? Can we sell them our different home care products? Can we sell them like plumbing and draining? Can we sell them home electrical cover? 
And if so, how much money would that bring the business at what point in the journey? And think of various different kinds of strategies. And the best thing about product is you kind of work with loads of different teams. So you need to make sure if this is legally allowed, if our mm -hmm. customer operations can set this up, if the field can deliver it. So it's really fantastic. And I have lots of autonomy. So the grad scheme is fantastic. And then even after the grad scheme, we kind of fall into roles, which gives us loads of responsibility. So yeah, it's, it's really, really great. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of things that you can kind of get involved in just in that kind of one journey that you just mapped out there about you know, thinking about different things that, and working with a lot of other teams as well. So that's brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, I think I'm going to shoot back over to Carla now because we're going to look at the recruitment process. Yeah, definitely. So thanks for everybody for your introductions. Um, Gabriella, I'm just going to ask you to um, turn your camera on and off because you've just frozen and I'm going to loop back to Abby and then come back to you to ask about the <laughs> assessment centre. So Abby, something that you mentioned previously when we've been speaking is about the um, advice that you were given before, the guidance and advice that you were given before the telephone interview and also the debrief that you received after the interview. Can you tell us a little bit more about what advice you were given before and obviously after? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm not entirely sure if this is how the process still works. So I did this back in 2016, 2017. Um, but the the second stage of the of the application process when I applied for the summer placement was a telephone interview. Mm -hmm. um, and I just remember kind of at that point in time applying for multiple placements um, with different companies. And I just really appreciated the fact that Centrica kind of gave you a ring before the telephone interview to explain yeah. what to expect. So just kind of a, we'll be asking you questions. And when I did it, it was kind of scenario based. What would you do in this situation? Not a give me a time when you have done this or demonstrated this. And it was just, it was something you probably, you might've been able to get told over email, but it was just nice to, to speak to someone and to hear it, hear it from someone kind of in advance of the telephone interview. And then um, just the opportunity to ask any questions. And then after the interview, um, I, I, I think it was, yeah, before the assessment center, you there was a kind of a debrief call that said, oh, the, this was um, how you scored in, in this question. and and And, kind of a bit of feedback on oh I think you got the wrong end of the stick with this question but after the interview I kind of guided you a little bit you managed to kind of pick it up and, and that's why you, you scored a three out of four as opposed to a four out of four or something like that so it was just nice to have that feedback um, and then again because that was after the telephone interview it gave you the opportunity to ask any questions about what to expect um, or if you needed to prepare anything for the for the assessment centre. Yeah, I really like that personal touch that you always seem to get with Centrica. It's, you know, it's not an, e an, an email, it's a, it's a conversation with somebody. And I think, again, it settles your nerves a little bit, doesn't it, when you know you're speaking to a human being at the other end um, of, the, of the whole process. Um, so just to note out to the people who are watching this webinar, um, so if, if you don't already know, GradCrack has actually got a feedback pledge. Um, so all of our employers, um, including Centrica, have signed a feedback pledge with GradCracker, which basically means that at the last stage of their assessment process, whether it's in an interview or assessment centre, if you request feedback from the employer, they will give you that feedback. So make sure you do that. You know, you can always learn from, from what's happened previously and um, get in touch with any employer on grad cracker and get that feedback and, and learn from it so that'll be um make sure you do that it's a really positive thing that centrica does that as well for us gabriella you're back i can see your face moving. Back. i've been staring at your eyes <laughs> <and> thinking <laughs> and um, so tell us abby mentioned there about the the, uh, the process a couple of years ago tell us about what the assessment center interview process is looking like this year Yes, um, so obviously we've had to sort of uh, be agile in our approach um, and we followed a very similar approach to many other organisations and we basically moved our assessment centres online. Um, we don't do a telephone interview anymore um, as part of the first stage of the process, it's more of a video interview. So um, nowadays what you would do is when we open for applications, you apply, you submit your CV um once you, we've received the cv you'll then receive links to undertake some sort of online tests um verbal uh, reasoning and some numeracy tests and at that point you'll also be asked to complete a personality questionnaire as well and it's that it's the responses to that personality questionnaire that generate a lot of the questions that you'll be asked um at the assessment center as part of the interview so it's very sort of honed in and bespoke uh, to you if you pass the test, and I say, please, please, please do, the tests are not difficult, but they are time constrained. Um, and you do need to sort of have be aware of the, uh, of the type of questions you get asked. 
So please make sure that you do everything you can to pass those tests, because if you don't pass, you don't move on to the next stage. Yeah. If you're successful in moving on to the next stage, you'll be invited to do a video interview. You'll be given the questions in advance, and then you'll at your own leisure, you can record the answers to them. There are four questions, but each question is multifaceted. So one top tip for that is make sure that you're covering off all the points asked in the question. Um, and there's absolutely nothing to stop you in advance sort of putting a few notes um, on a piece of paper um, so that you can collect your ideas and make sure that you're, you're covering off all the points. I wouldn't recommend that you fully script your answers because that tends to be quite noticeable if that's what you do. <laughs> However, our, very much our approach when we're assessing candidates is very much we want to screen people in. We're not looking to screen them out. Yeah. So we don't start off with, you know, well, you've done that wrong. So we'll take that point off. We've done that. It doesn't work like that. What we're doing is looking for all the good things that you do and appreciate the good things. So we're screening you in and we're looking for reasons to pass you on to the next step. Um, if you're then successful at the video interview, uh, then you will be invited to an assessment centre. This is a half a day assessment centre. And as I've mentioned previously, it will be facilitated um, by uh, a group of grads um, from the, the, the stream that you're looking to join. But as Abby mentioned, prior to that, you will get a coaching call. Um, with someone from the resourcing team who'll give you some feedback um, on how your video interview was, was viewed. Um, uh, they will do a technical run through with you, just make sure you've got all the functionality you'll need. We run all our assessment centers uh, through Microsoft Teams. Um, and also just to prepare you for what to expect on the day. So on the day, uh, you will come together in the morning with all the grads and you'll virtually meet the assessors. Then the assessors are moved into another room. And you have an opportunity of half an hour or so to hear from the grads running the, the, the day uh, to talk about their experiences, what it's like to be a graduate centrica, for the individual to ask all the questions they want and make sure that they've got everything they need for the day. Then there are three exercises. The first exercise is a group exercise. This is all about showing how you can collaborate and influence and work together as a team to come up with um, an agreed, mutually beneficial solution to a problem. Then there will be uh, an exercise we call Meet the Manager. Now, for this exercise, you'll have some pre-reading, some pre-information, and um, on the day, you'll be asked to come up with some recommendations and then you experience and uh, meet the manager. And what we're trying to do is sort of replicate more of a real life situation in so much as you've had time to go away and think about something. You've had some data, you've had some, you know, product information, you've had some uh, information on our customers and, and, and that sort of thing. And then you come to the line manager in the map, meet the manager and you talk through your recommendations. And it's very much a two way flow. Um, and then after that, then you will go uh, go into a, a sort of an interview, interview scenario. Um, and as I've mentioned before, a number of the questions will be focused around the answers you've given to your uh, personality questionnaire. Yeah. There will also be a series of questions uh, around your fit for the centric of values. And there will also be a series of questions based around uh, your fit for the stream that you're applying. So. The assessors are keen to understand why have you, you um, applied for that particular stream. Yeah, perfect. So that was very comprehensive, Gabriella. <laughs> so there's a couple <laughs> of things that I wanted to pick up on that Gabriella's just mentioned. Um, so the video interviews, remember that somebody is going to be watching this interview. So um, when we've been speaking to students and presenting students at universities across the UK, um, the, 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 the people who are watching the interviews are watching you as well so you know how you are coming across your hand actions and everything else so make sure you smile you know make sure you come across really well because I know you're just looking at, at yourself like I am doing now but just remember that's always somebody at the other end um, of the computer and um, I really like the fact Gabriella that everything seems to be really targeted towards the individual and the personalities and things like that I've never actually heard that before so I think that's something that's quite special to Centrica um, and also the thing I wanted to, to mention is the core values, absolutely. We were going to go on and talk about these a little bit later on, but um, if you don't get time, John, during this webinar, the core values of Centrica are included on the hub. Um, so make sure you go through, read through those and um, 
do some research before obviously you get through to the application stage. What I'm going to do now is um, move on a little bit to training and development. I know, Ben, you mentioned about agile working and everything else a little bit earlier on. Um, but, Abby, I'm really keen to know all about the, um, the situation that you're currently in. So you're studying to become an accountant. Centrica is helping you with this. So how do you how do you do both? You know, how do you have a, a full time job and be studying as well? So um, Centrica are, are really supportive of kind of all of the mm. finance graduates that are, that are studying to um, become an accountant and you get 25 days of study leave a year. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things that kind of drew me to Centrica with with training is that you, you kind of you have the flexibility to choose how you use them. So there's a we have a course provider um, cap plan and you can choose to book onto courses yourself if you'd like to be kind of taught the course you can. Uh, without when we weren't in COVID times, you can go into a centre and learn or you can do it online or you can choose to use those days just to self-teach the materials if you get sent the materials from the course provider. So it's it's really flexible and you have those 25 days each placement year to use how you choose to use them. And then you also get a day off for, for each exam. So there's, I'm studying for the ACA and there's 15 exams. So those exams days don't come out of your 25 days of study leave. So that's that's really great that you kind of you get that time off for studying and then obviously you do have to squeeze it in kind of in the mornings and evenings around work as well but it's uh it'll be worth it in the end yeah. um no. and then you can see it's accommodating. yeah and you also you get assigned a study counsellor so you have six monthly catch-ups with your study counsellor and they'll kind of ask you how your exams are going um if you need any support and then you kind of talk through some some ethics modules and some professional development steps that you need to kind of demonstrate examples of of, of all these different um professional development steps and, and they're really really great i say they're six months but if you if you need to be in touch more than that then they're, they're all very accommodating um and then again the graduate network is great so speaking to grads in the years above to kind of ask them well, what order did you do the exams in or would you recommend doing this one at the same time as doing this one and stuff like that so there's loads of support from from graduate study counsellors talent board your manager all sorts and then, and then you do get those those 25 days um study leave wow and how long does the whole process take then to become um, a qualified accountant so it's three years. It's the length, the length of the graduate scheme. Yeah. Um, and an, another good thing about Centrica is that you have a choice of which qualification you do. So um, you have the choice between ACA and SEMA, um, which I'm not sure that, that lots of places in industry kind of offer you that option to choose. Whereas at Centrica, you do have that choice, which is which was a good thing. Um, and what are the differences between the ACA and SEMA? So the ACA is more technical accounting whereas SEMA is management accounting um, so there's I think one of the big differences there's a few more tax modules and a bit more detail on tax in the ACA as, as opposed to SEMA and the, the way they the exams are structured are, are slightly different um, but uh, on your induction day um, there's a representative from ACA and a representative from SEMA they come in and kind of explain the differences and, and talk to you about it so that's all organized for, for when you start your role to kind of help you with making those decisions. Great. Thanks very much, Abby. And I think we're going to go now on to projects. Yes. Um, so I'm quite keen to find out a little bit more about everybody's favourite project or favourite experience so far working for Centrica. So um, Abhishek, I'm going to come to you first. If you would like to tell us a little bit more about your favourite experience so far. I would say one of my favourite experiences was in my second rotation. Um, so I worked uh, in digital sales at Hive. So in a nutshell, all those kind of promotions you see on websites so black friday sales i essentially was really instrumental in putting together so that would be working with loads of different teams so our digital team our design team how do we want it to look um the technical team essentially put it together so all the buttons you click go in the right places um the finance team to see how much money we're going to bring in and it was kind of like my first sense of real achievement knowing that oh a sale you produced brought in millions of pounds of money for the business so I'd say, and to have that experience so early on was probably one of my biggest, um, one of my hi highlights. And that was when we were in the London office, um, meeting people. Um, so yeah, that that probably was my, my top experience. It sounds like a pretty good experience bringing bringing <laughs> pounds in. Like I think anybody <laughs> would have that, wouldn't they? <clears throat> and Sama, coming to you next. What's your favourite experience or project so far? Um, I'd say there's so many to pick from, but the one that sort of sticks out to me the most was my first 
proper project that I had while working for the automation team in finance. So the ask was to create a Power BI report and do automation on the back of that um, for the real estate, um, excuse me, and facilities management team. Um, so they wanted it to be visually appealing, but more importantly, they wanted to streamline sort of the NTN month processes because they're quite a small team, but they've got a significant amount of analysis that they do month, uh, especially on month end. Um, so although sort of now looking back on it, um, the code and sort of the logic that I embedded into that project is probably not as rigorous as some other projects that I'd done henceforth. But it was something I'd never done before and I was really bad at it when I started. And so I was super satisfied when I actually got the ball rolling and then having the feedback from the team and seeing how useful it actually was sort of day to day and how much more time it saved them from sort of just using Excel. Um, and then you, you have that option so you can use the Excel, you can use the BI and you're able to share it a lot more widely with the, the team. So just seeing sort of my growth from that first month, um, just quite literally like about three to four weeks, just seeing that it just made me super happy. And every project I've had after that, I thought, you know, I sort of put my whole self into it. So, yeah, I'd pick that one. No, that's really good. It's, it's nice to hear that, you know, you, you're kind of choosing something where you really kind of grew as an individual mm -hmm. and really kind of learned. And that, that's really nice. And then you can take that forward into other projects as well. So that's great. Thank you very much, Summer. Um, ben, over to you next. What's your favourite experience been? Um, yeah, so I've had a lot of good experiences mostly in my um, in my most current role but I'm going to go a little bit different and go for an experience um, that I've had as co-chair of our um, LGBTQ plus network um, and in particular I think my favorite project has been the one I've run recently and I've just had signed off um, and that's a project to actually get our networks recognized on our whole fleet of electric vans. Um, so that's a fleet size of up to 12,000 vans over the next five years. Um, and we have secured a place to um, reference our networks and Centrica's commitment to diversity and inclusion on all of those vans moving forward. Um, so yeah, really exciting to be able to lead on that project and say that I've had such a massive impact on the business because essentially the British gas vans are what everyone sees. Yeah. Um, so yeah, really, really exciting. Well, these are all so good. And then, so when, when we're going to see these these um, what logos on the vans, Ben, when can we look look forward to seeing them? Yeah. So um, the I think the electric vans are being released in stages, uh, yeah. but we've just had final sign off. So every single van that's being printed moving forward, you'll start mm -hmm. seeing them being rolled out. Um, I'm probably not allowed to say what it is yet, but you'll you'll definitely be able to tell when you when you see the van with the um, with the networks and the commitment to diversity and inclusion on there see we live through you guys ben you know we need a claim to fame so there's a, <laughs> so now when i see a british gas i'm like oh i know the person who did that yeah yeah <laughs> i need to be famous somehow sorry <laughs> i think it's up to you <laughs> yeah abby over to you um, um for your favorite experience please um, mine's are kind of similar to Sammer's in the sense that it was something that at the beginning I was just kind of daunted by. But in my in my first role um, in Treasury, I, I ran the back office day process, which involved kind of reconciling bank accounts, investigating variances and um, making payments for the day. And, and they were kind of quite large sums of money. And I just thought at the beginning, how am I ever going to get my head around this process and figure out why there's variances and, and all of that? And kind of within a couple of months, I'd managed to, to pick it up. Um, and just kind of enjoyed the aspect of working with the team to kind of work some of the problems out and stuff and it was just one of those that had you asked me at the beginning of the role I'd have thought there's no way I'm going to get my head around this um, and it was a sense of achievement um, at the end to be like yeah I managed to do that. Oh that's brilliant well thank you very much. I, I, love, I love the thought that your favourite um, project or memory abbey is reconciling bank accounts and it is my worst nightmare. <laughs> 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 Every month that I do that for the Grad Cracker accounts, I just think, oh my lord, I'm going to get through this. But we get there, we get there. So I'm glad it's a positive for you, Abby. <laughs> well, what we're going to go on to now is um, just, I was going to go on to a quick fire round. So this idea came from the Centrica Hub. Um, so there's a video on there about all the um, Centrica grads busting some graduate recruitment myths. 
But I get the feeling, Gabrielle, that we've kind of covered off a lot of these um, during the webinar with the grads, especially, Ben, what you've said about the support networks and everything else. And it seems like really, some really brilliant opportunities. What I don't think that we've covered um, off, Gabrielle, and what I'd really like to touch on is the, the benefits of working at Centrica. So would you mind um, just like, listing those, go through those? Yeah, sure. Um... So uh, one of the things I think that's um, quite uh, beneficial to Centrica for our graduates is that we bring them on on a competitive salary, also yeah. with, with a sort of a joining bonus, but you also get increments um, throughout the graduate programme. So each time you do a new placement, you also get a salary increment. Um, mm -hmm. And there are bonuses. Um, and we also have a pretty good benefits package. So uh, quite a generous pension scheme. We have employee share schemes. There are retail vouchers. And we've recently introduced a virtual GP service and some healthcare plans. Um, when you're actually in the office as well, um, a lot of the offices have gym membership, free tea and coffee, um, free fruit was something that I really appreciated when I was working in the office. Whether that will still remain when we return to the offices, I, I don't know. Um, but there's also corporate discounts on gym memberships and other things like that. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good comprehensive package. Um, and, and there are good, good benefits with regards to, as I say, the opportunities available to graduates to just get involved in pretty much anything they want to get involved with from we had a group of grads um, recently who decided they want to set up a, a, a series of podcasts. So each couple of weeks we get a new podcast that has been produced by a by a, a group of grads and they started with Chris O'Shea they've had most of the senior leaders but they've also had graduates on it as well um, and we've also had graduate alumni on there and you know they're really interesting and that's something that they you know they had an idea they went and talked to someone about it um, and now they're delivering that and people look forward to these these regular podcasts and and the next step now is that they're going to be giving some training on to others on how to uh, record your own podcasts so oh. you know the ripple effect of what they're doing <laughs> yeah definitely I mean the, the opportunities do seem brilliant at, at Centrica um, from like a personal level to training and development and everything else and um, so just a note to say that um, the Centrica place and graduate opportunities are actually closed for this for this this year but they will reopen in November and um, which is just around the corner it'll soon fly by and um, so make sure you go on to the Centrica hub and start following them to be alerted to when their opportunities do open I did have a chat with the careers team and um, yesterday and we're thinking you're going to open round about November time Gabriella is that, is that still the, the case yeah, probably. Um, if you spoke to them yesterday, then you probably got more up to date. But yes, <laughs> but what I would say that would be for graduates. Um, so uh, we fill most of our graduate vacancies through our summer placement conversions. Um, so we only have a small number of graduate vacancies, but I would very much recommend everyone who's listening to also consider doing a summer placement with us, um, because then that's the good trans uh, transfer onto the graduate programme. And we're likely to go to open for applications for that either in the, um, December or January. So we'll do that a few months after we finish the graduate. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Gabriella. So watch this space, everybody. Like Abby said at the beginning, it's, it's definitely worth doing a summer placement. Um, so make sure you apply, make sure you follow Centrica as well. Um, so thank you very much, everybody. This this hour is just absolutely shot by. I can't believe how quickly time goes, honestly. Um, your stories have been amazing, and thank you for sharing those with uh, me and Surf, and obviously everybody who's watching in the audience. Um, next Thursday at two, I am going to be joining you on the other side. So I'm going to be sat watching Sophie and Jessica, and they are going to take the lead with technology giant Fujitsu. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but they've got a very unique recruitment process, which they're going to share with us. So that's all I'm saying. My lips are sealed. Join us next week and so you don't miss out. And thanks, everybody, again, for joining us today. And we shall see you soon. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.